Hey, by the way, uh, every now and then, yo, as you know, we scour the internet for uh, content that we think you guys will find interesting, compelling, and entertaining. And uh, we found uh, some content yesterday. It's another Cry for Help video featuring one member of our staff here. Uh -oh. uh, this week, it's Greg Jennings. Um, listen Great. to the video that we saw and found yesterday on the internet. Play there, guys. Go ahead. Hey, if you hear me say something stupid like, I don't know, Justin Fields is better than Brock Purdy, <laughs> it's because I'm jealous of James Jones' success and I want more attention. Sorry. Oh, so, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're doing these uh, videos, right. Right. Yes. but uh, I thought James always... Jones was a good friend and like godfather yeah. to yeah. one of your kids, no? He definitely is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> James, you're my guy. Yeah, He's well, uh, he, he, until he moved out to California and said, I'll take that job on speak. You yeah. can't have it. But that's uh, you know, inside information. <laughs> do, we have, do we ever that, throw rocks at Griff for us, him giving us a sexy face with the squinted eyes I like and kind it, of the low honest. light? I like what? it. What do you mean? Like point out all I'm these saying, things. Like, 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 what? When you give a sports team, you got to be bombastic. You're like, hey, I'm Greg Jennings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's the deal. <laughs> what he's saying, what we all want to hear you say on the show just one time, is you give us that, like, Billy D face <laughs> And just say Wakanda forever, <laughs> and we'll be done with it. <laughs> just do that, and then we can stop bringing it up. Got it. No, not now. Maybe the always swap. All right, the always swap. Time in the show. Time in the show. Let's see. First in football. Go right ahead, Jacoby. We start first in football in Detroit with Dan Campbell, who Who's said that? the following when asked about being America's team: "Quote, it's not over. If other people are enjoying watching us play, of course we're all over that. You're welcome." As long as you weren't oh, bashing us early. Now Dan Campbell's taking out the receipts and saying, don't join the bandwagon if you're critical of us when we were losing games. How do you feel about that, Mr. Carter? I mean, this is when you get yourself a little bit of trouble, yeah, right? right? When yeah. all of a sudden you start chirping you after out. you've won. The reality is that you, know, you took a job that was the laughing stock of the NFL, among a couple other franchises as well. And to your credit, you turned it around. But man, you've been so consistent, you know, with the messaging and who you are and the attitude and personality of the team. Now's not the time to clap back at people that were critical of the Detroit Lions or questioned if you were the right guy for the job or if Jared Goff could lead a team, Correct. you know, back to a Super Bowl. Those are all very fair talking points because as we just celebrated, you hadn't won a division yeah. in over 30 yeah. years. Like, what should we do? You know, just give you a trophy for getting the job. So I think that takes away a little bit, or can take away a little bit, from all the positivity that he has earned mm -hmm. and that the franchise has earned. And guys like Gibbs and Goff and Hutchinson and Aaron Glenn and all these great stories, don't be that guy now. You have plenty of time to be that guy when you've got the Lombardi Trophy you know, raised above your head and tears are coming down your face and confetti sticking to your cheeks because you did the impossible. Now's not the time to do it because here's what happens. If you start chirping about the haters now, a guy like me might come on TV and say, can you explain to me why it is that your rough-and-tumble defense has given up over 300 yards passing in five consecutive games, and two of those games were against Nick Mullins and the Minnesota Vikings. We can start playing that game, and that's a game you're not going to win. Yeah, and, and, and you got to understand, like, I, I get where Dan Campbell is coming from, but what he has to understand is we've, we've gone through, as a Michigander, as a Lions A Michigander! Fan, after, uh, yeah. 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 And yeah. Never watching said this lot. team struggle and not have success, like, even last year, they, they started the season one and six. Yeah. He was concerned about his own job. That's right. right. Like, publicly, he I don't even know if I'm going to have a job after this. And then they turned it on. They've become the sweetheart, the darling. Everyone loves this team yep. based on what they've been able to overcome. It's not, it's not like people are just bashing the Detroit Lions because we just hate this franchise. We just have grown to understand they might Look, mess it up. The Detroit Lions right now have been embraced by America yes. because they represent America. Blue collar town, against all odds, no one giving you a shot. You know, the blue uh, blue collar work ethic, yep. all those things that comes along with the city of Detroit, with Dan Campbell, and you should embrace that. 
You don't want to be the other guy that starts chirping right now because when you look at the other teams that are in there, obviously Baltimore, you know, has inner city problems, well documented, of yeah. course. And it's not like New York City or, you know, wine country, Sonoma County, you know, San Francisco. <laughs> Just be who you are and play to it because it works. I tell you right now that if you took a poll of Americans that have an interest in the NFL, Outside of Niner fans and Lions fans, 95% of the country wants Detroit to beat San Francisco. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. And I don't think it's even close. Look, that, hey, yeah. if, if you remember how loud that game was? Yes. Remember how yeah. loud it was? Yeah. It was like noticeably loud on your television. And if every one of those people that bashed the Lions at some point in the last three years was not in that stadium, it would be silent. Because the, the bashing comes from inside. Half <laughs> yeah. the people wearing blue in right? that stadium were bashing you because yeah. you were three and thirteen to one, and then one and six. You were awful. You were bashable. Now you're good. This right. is how it works. Yeah, me and Greg played in Detroit, where the, the fans were wearing brown bags. I was there. thinking that. Yeah, yeah, like, I was. I remember walking the sideline as a Steeler and be like, "That's not good." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> clearly. And overall, not, but you got to give him credit. I dated her once. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Dating's not the word. But no, since 2022, this is what he should get credit. And then we would have a graphic to show it, man. Oh, look. He turned this thing around in yeah. a big way. You talk about wins versus losses, uh, point differential. And what I love more about uh, what Dan Campbell did in his three years, man, he didn't just go get a quarterback. He just didn't go get a Moss A. Brown. He understood the journeyman that he had. He had a center in a Frank Ragnall. He had Tyler Decker. He said, listen, for us to get to the show uh, and the Super Bowl, we got to build around those guys. So he went and got Peter Sewell. He went and got a running back at Jamar Gibbs, right? So it was, well, he needs to be – I guess decorated or given his flowers because he built from the inside out. The front office did a good job. And, yeah, and, and I would just that. add this last thing. I don't think there is a fan and or a former player or current player that wouldn't be running at the chance to play for that coach. Yeah. Right. Like oh, everybody yeah. loves Dan Campbell and what he stands for. So come on, Dan, man. We, we, we're, we're back. By the way, and it's, a, it's a teeny, 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 teeny little slip up. But oh. just stay on, stay on, 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 on point. Well, a lot of it has and to it's be. All good. Well, a lot of it has to be frustration too, Craig. Right? Because like you just said, this guy week after week was being questioned if he's the guy for the job. Is he a meathead? Right? When he played in the That's league, right. he was a journeyman tight end. He right. wasn't a guy that was as decorated or was he highly. Was not. He was just kind of he was a meat and potatoes type guy. So when he got the job, a lot of people said, "Dan Campbell? Right? Who? Really? Like, what? What? Yeah. But people forget the hell of a job he did in Miami. I, I will Campbell, say this. You know that Campbell stat I gave is a legitimate stat where that defense, that pass defense has been brutal. Uh, giving up over 300 yards in five yeah. straight games. Nick Mullins is the worst quarterback I've ever seen in the league. So that's not good. And then when you combine that with the reality, say what you want about Brock Purdy, but with all the weapons San Francisco has, you know, they will throw the ball all over the field yeah. against that defense. If that's the defense that shows up this Sunday, it's over quick. We'll get to that later in the oh, show. Right you. now we're moving on to second in football and a gentleman by the name of Bill Belichick. Man, heard of him. So question for you is this, is of these teams you see right here, which one can you imagine Belichick coaching for? Which one should he coach for? And why hasn't the market been a little quiet for him? Well, I, I'm shocked by it all. So if you take the charges off that list only because it does look like that yeah, they have uh, the financial parts of the deal with Harbaugh done, that takes them off the list. The Seahawks is the best job, in my opinion, of those four. A, they're in the NFC, and B, you know, you've got pretty good talent on that team and a lot of weapons sure. and a pretty good defense. That leads you to doom good, but uh, boom good, but pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm baffled. I'm, I don't know what messaging you know, Bill Belichick or his agents putting out there of what he's looking for, but you have organizations that have never won. You have organizations that the cupboard's not bare, that do have some talent. You have organizations that I think are a great leader away from making a legitimate run, Dallas, Philadelphia, and on and on, and only one team has even brought the greatest of all time in for an interview. That, to me, is uh, embarrassing. And that, to me, is insulting to Bill Belichick. And you're going to learn about Bill Belichick if he takes the Atlanta job. Something very interesting. The guy is desperate to continue to coach and didn't want to leave New England. He wants to keep coaching. He wants to break Don Shula's record for most wins in the history of the NFL. He's probably two seasons of uh, just over 500 record in doing that. As you see, he's 14 wins away from tying Shula. So a couple nine and eight seasons, yeah. and he's the all-time winningest coach in the history of the NFL, which clearly is important to him. But at what cost? Like, as a man, at what cost are you now going to humble yourself and go work for Atlanta? 
Are you going to take the Carolina job? And where is everybody that acknowledges that B squared is the greatest coach in the history of football? How come they're not clamoring to get him to come in? Why did the Eagles decide we're bringing Sirianni back press conference today uh, and we're not even interested in Bill Belichick? Why did the Dallas Cowboys say Mike McCarthy's coming back? We have no interest in Bill Belichick. There's something fishy in that Bill I Belichick think, water. I think I get it because sex sells. And this is what he's been looking Whoa! like. This is what he's been looking like on, on camera, Craig, if we can throw it up there. Look oh, at that yeah. raggedy-ass Bill Belichick looking old and tired. He's old and tired. Get like, the, his sweatshirt. resume is old. Like, yeah. when you talk about all the cities that he now has to stand in front of, and this young locker room be able to connect to, you want to talk to a guy like that? You want to listen to an old ass? You look like he, he fell out of a trunk. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> like, there's no connection. I, you, can, you can, honestly, you can't, his resume speaks for himself. Yeah. You can't even talk about right. it. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to connect to that locker room. There's not one guy that was on this team this year and talked gloomily about Bill Belichick. They said we played for a great coach, but there was a disconnect. That's why they lost. So if you're going to hire Bill Belichick, you're going to have to put somebody alongside of him that's going to construct a uh, roster that is conducive to what he can do uh, from a coach's standpoint. Yeah, I mean, to me, just give me a team that's got a quarterback, and I'm going to win a lot of games with Bill Belichick as my head coach, period, stop. Yeah, I think after he gets with the team, I think we'll find out that it was really his decision. You think about what Tom Brady did, like when he left. He went to the best possible he scenario. The, he knew right. where he wanted to end up. Yep. And so Bill, Bill Belichick has, has earned the right to be selective. Sure. And so it, it's not that he probably isn't getting phone calls or people aren't, or teams aren't inquiring. It's he's selective. He's not just going to go anywhere. He wants to go to the yeah, best. Yeah, but Atlanta? Fit. Any chance I, he waits? I, I think Seahawks is probably Any chance know what? Look at the landscape. No. I Look don't at the landscape. So. Maybe, I, maybe I'll just wait for this I don't think he All can, those teams I don't think he can sit out. Way, besides the Chargers. I get the sense. It's a great question. Like, if you're Belichick, why not take the year off, recharge the batteries, get some rest, y'all. You, you know why. But every network in America would hire him. McCarthy. And then wait for McCarthy to fail again. Wait for Sirianni to embarrass himself again. And then come in, you know, the white knight on the horse the whole bit and save the franchise. I don't understand why Bill Belichick is willing to humble himself by taking an Atlanta job, which maybe he doesn't get, and not wait out for the best possible scenario. Like, that, to me, makes no sense well, at all. You and if you're one of those franchises that believes they have a franchise quarterback, how in the world would you not want to bring in the greatest coach of all time? It takes, it takes him two years to break the record, so he can take a year off. Yeah, but you also got to understand the couch gets comfortable too. Right? He's an old man. He's been in at this for a long time. He may find a little comfort on that couch. That's all, of course, the big guy said that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Eight, sex, oh, sex sells. I was giving out the phone number sex to sells. call in right there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've done that in a year and a half. I started giving out the phone number to call into the. Eight hundred one card. Just call it. Eight hundred one card. I was. I was <laughs> that, a year and a half. <laughs> one time. In a year and a half, 877. Oh, no, what is that? Let's get a phone number. <laughs> hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.